السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين so before we begin if you could look at someone sitting beside you and tell him or her that this day has been very beautiful the weather is good and the traffic has been good so we want to begin with positivity Okay, Jazakum khair. Thank you very much. Uh, last time when we started talking about this topic, we quoted a hadith, Al Hadith Al Qudsi. Al Hadith Al Qudsi, these are statements by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are not written in the Quran. So the meaning is from Allah and the phrasing is from the Prophet. In this Hadith Al Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana inda dhanni abidi bi wa ana ma'ahu idha dhakarani. So I will come to your rescue according to how you think of me. So according how you, you think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will help you. So if you are certain, that he will help you to solve your problem he will help you to achieve your goals and in this direction you become a positive person remembering him acknowledging his ex existence appreciating his goodness and accepting his guidance he will guide you towards achieving your goals but if you are hesitating saying you know maybe he will help me maybe he won't if you are shaky then you might not get what you want and this is why rasulullah prophet muhammad peace be upon him sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that when you make dua supplication to allah invoking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you solve your problems you have to be sure you have to be certain that he will help you you should not entertain any iota of doubt in your heart so if this is your stance allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely will help you so so we talked about some techniques we didn't complete them and we will continue talking about them and actually before we start I would like to quote you this this is part of the blurb that we sent which says positive thinking is a mental and emotional attitude that focuses on the bright side of life so if you are a positive person you are an optimist you will always focus on the bright side of the, of life you will never let let your your failures bog you down you will always be optimistic and if you happen to fail you will take it as an as an opportunity to learn from your mistakes so that you do not repeat them again so it continues success is built on skills attitude and knowledge and i said before according to my analysis i equate the skills with wiring in a car so you have a car you have an airplane the wiring in it we call them the, i equate them to the skills so skills to us wiring to occur or any other electronic device and attitude this is an engine so we talked of a man for example who was selling uh, sausages on a street he was a very positive person with enthusiasm he would always entertain his customers so his business grew so he ordered for other stuff in order to expand his business so when his son graduated from a college of business he was happy he said you know what because my son has already graduated I'm gonna make a lot of money little did he know that he was more enthusiastic than his son that his son who had a degree in economics was going to ruin his business so the son comes in the first day at work helping his father he says dad do you know that there is a global financial crisis so the father doesn't know what the crisis is he says you know many people won't be able to buy your sausages you will suffer from a deficit this and that will happen so the attitude of the man changed so all the stock that he was planning to order he stopped the order and started being miserable dejected customers would come to him he wouldn't answer he was always frowning so he lost business not because of lack of knowledge but because of change of attitude and we said according to research actually a book written by a scholar by the name Shiv Khaira entitled you can win in that book he says 15 percent of your success could be attributed to your knowledge to your qualifications and 85 percent would be attributed to your attitude in other words you can achieve a lot if your attitude is positive if your attitude is negative you will fail to achieve a lot so we said attitude is the engine and then knowledge um, in terms of computers knowledge is like a software 
or like a steering if you're driving a car. So it will guide you where to go. But most importantly is the engine. So even if the car is a very good one with a very good body with a very nice steering, if it doesn't have the engine, it can't move. So your attitude is your engine to success. So of these Positive thinking and attitudes have been proven to increase both your personal and business results and achievements. So on a personal level, if you are a positive person, you will succeed. If you are a businessman, you will succeed. So this is why we said there was a research that was done in a university, in a faculty of psychology. They, uh, they studied the behavior of 600 students. Actually, they polled them. And out of 600 students, 75% of them said the most, the biggest problem they were suffering was lack of self-confidence. So students in a psychology faculty, 75% of them said they lack self-confidence. And if you lack self-confidence, you're losing a lot in terms of dealing with people, doing business, looking for employment. So this is why we said it's very important to learn about positive thinking. Positive thinking will direct you towards achieving your goals. So we said among the techniques is, to, is positive visualization. So, for example, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a proctor, you name it. So, you should always visualize that you are there. Paint a picture in your mind that I'm already there. And actually, according to psychology, we said you have to visualize positive achievements or positive experiences. Continue thinking about them visualizing them for more than 20 seconds this will help you inculcate these ideas that you have these pictures that you get into your subconscious mind so it become part of you so what they say according to psychology uh, they say positive experiences have to be held in our awareness for more than 12 seconds for the transfer from short-term memory to long-term memory to take place so you need to hold positive memories positive experiences uh, positive expectations in your awareness for more than 12 seconds and this will help the transfer to smoothly take place from short-term memory to long-term memory so with the help of dua supplication to God Almighty belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you visualize where you want to go this will be part of you and you will develop mechanisms of how to achieve your goals but if you are bogged down by problems, tribulations, and bad thoughts, there is no way you can be positive to a, to a level of thinking about solutions to your problems or thinking about mechanisms that can help you achieve your goals. So we said create a clear, exciting picture of your goal and your ideal life and replay this picture in your mind over and over again with positivity. All improvement in your life begins with an improvement in your mental pictures. So if you have a positive picture in your mind of what you want to achieve, what you want to be, and if you inculcate this picture in your subconscious mind, it will help you achieve a lot. It will galvanize all your skills, all your efforts towards achieving this goal. So as you see yourself on the inside, you will be on the outside. So positive uh, success begins within you it's endogenous it comes from yourself so you have to work on yourself your husband your teacher your students your employer they will not necessarily improve the way you think it comes from within you and actually I will give you a story of two sons two brothers from the same father one of them was successful and another one was a failure so they asked both of them the, the one who failed in life, what motivated you to fail in life? He said, my father. My father was not a careful person. He didn't take care of the family. He didn't fend for the family. He was a drunkard. He would come late at home. He didn't give us any knowledge. He didn't give us any guidance. So I wanted to be like him. The other one, the successful one, the same motivation. He said, I am successful because of my father. I wanted to be the opposite of my father. My father was careless. He didn't take care of us. He didn't take care of my mother. He didn't fend for us. We had to work for ourselves. So I didn't want to grow up like my father. So the same source of inspiration 
bad father, but a student, a, a son become one son becomes successful and the other one becomes unsuccessful. So the same stimulus, depending on how you respond to it, it can either be motivational for you to become successful or it can demoralize you. So all depends on you. You can't blame anyone. So the successful son did not blame his father. He said, because of him, I didn't want to be like him. I wanted to be different. So as you see yourself from the inside, you will be in the outside. So you have to begin being positive about yourself, about your skills. Don't be pessimistic. Don't let problems bog you down. Don't let what people say about you demoralize you. You should always think you are a unique creature. You came to this life alone. You will die alone. You will face God Almighty alone. You want say because so and so said I'm this and that and that this is why I didn't succeed so God Allah is with you so and actually we said we talked about the importance of prayer not only do Muslims say that for example Vincent the author of a book entitled uh, the power of positive thinking he said according to his book in America they invited a very skillful doctor who was very very successful in conducting operations so the surgeries that he op if he, he performed majority of them were successful so people were intrigued about his success they wanted to know what's the secret behind this success they invited him to give a lecture in the US so he told them before I go to the theater to operate on any person I dedicate some minutes to pray to God and while I'm conducting an operation I feel the hand of God is working with me he isn't a Muslim so he felt that way that it was important for him before doing any operation to pray to God and actually he said if any doctor any patient wants to to heal or they want to be successful in their operations or they want to be cured from their diseases three people have to synergize a medical doctor a psychologist and a religious leader so in other words if someone is ill he or she is going to be operated so she or he has to be prepared psychologically that you know you the operation will be successful don't be sad don't lose hope you will make it Psycholo psycho the, the way she thinks, the thought process that he or she has during this time, it will help in the process of the operation to be successful. Also, a religious leader. If you are a Muslim, you need a sheikh. If you are a Muslim, a priest, to tell you that, you know, don't worry. God will bless this work, the work that the doctor is, is going to do. So what he says... The psychiatrist is not overlapping over the work of the medical doctor, neither is the religious priest overlapping the work of the doctor or the psychiatrist. They are complementing one another, which is very important. So the power of prayer. So if you are a negative person and you want to shift from negativity to positivity, you have always to pray to God Almighty, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are a lot of supplications that you can say in this regard. We will see some of them as we go ahead. So as you can see this picture, we have this person here, this, these people are successful. So if you, you want to be like them, you want to be a lawyer, why not make friendship, cultivate friendship with people in the field that you are you want to pursue if you want to be a doctor make friends with doctors visit them when they operate on, on on patients when they deal with patients once in a while visit a lawyer and this will give you motivation it will also give you positivity so while you are preparing while you are, you are inculcating in your subconscious mind a positive picture of you achieving your goals you have to make friendship with those people who will help you achieve your goals, especially those who are already in the field. And this will help you to learn about the technicalities of the job that you are pursuing and also to learn about the secrets of this job and to give you self-esteem and to give you hope that you can make it. Positive people. Your choice of the people with whom you live, work and associate will have more of an impact on your emotions and your, your success than any other factor. So if you are a negative person and you socialize with negative people, they will make it worse for you. Because as we said before, there are what we call mirror neurons, which were discovered in Italy in 1979. The mirror neurons were discovered first in primates, especially the monkeys. So they would bring monkeys 
divide them into two groups. One group would be given bananas and another group would be starved. So the ones that were starving when they saw the others eat bananas, they would feel happy. So the mirror neurons were active. They felt as though they were also eating the bananas. And those that were given bananas, when they saw the other group starving, they felt sad. So the mirror neurons were active. And actually these mirror neurons are more active in females than in men. So imagine you are surrounded with negative people. They feed you with negative stories, failures, war everywhere, desperation everywhere. So the mirror neurons will be active in your mind. So you will not think of being a positive person. You will be dejected and you will give up success. You think that, you know, there is doom everywhere. Even if I study, I go back to my country, I can't work, there is war. Maybe we will be killed tomorrow. Maybe our university will be raised tomorrow. So you are fed with the people around you. But if you surround yourself with positive people, it is infectious. They will make you a positive person. With their vitality and vigor, you will learn from them to be a positive person and you can learn from them how to be a successful person. So it's very important if you want to be a positive person choose, to choose friends that you will associate with. Decide henceforth to associate with winners, with positive, happy and optimistic people who are going somewhere with their lives. So you, if you want to be a positive, successful person, don't associate with people who just sit, eat and drink and everything to them is negative. For example, you find a person who used to work, he's now retired, he will, if you ask him about any company, it will be negative. Any school, negative. To him, everything is negative. So if you associate with this person, this will, he will infect you with negative ideas. So try as much as you can to be with positive people. Uh, negative people are, the, are among the primary sources of most of our lives and happiness. So if you surround yourself with negative people, they will make you an unhappy person. Because the mirror neurons will be very active. When you see them sad, dejected, negative about everything, so it will infect you. You will also be like them. And once you are like them, it will be difficult for you to achieve success. So these people will, if you associate with positive people, they will re-stimulate re your faith attitudes. So these people, even though you are trying to lag behind in your endeavors, when you associate with positive people, they will kindle your energy, your thought process, and you will try to be like them, seeing that, you know, they have suffered a lot, of, a lot of problems, maybe more problems than yours, but they were able to succeed in the different fields. So you say, even me, I can do it. I'm like them. Maybe sometimes you would feel that you are better than them. So this will be among the motivations for you to be a positive person. So there is this quote, which I really like, this one here. It says, a pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees opportunities in every difficulty. So whenever a pessimist person is in a difficult situation, he will find opportunities over there. Is there any one of you who has ever been in a difficult situation whereby they found opportunities from there? Difficult situation whereby you feel, I can't make it. But being in that difficult situation with positivity, focusing on your goals, focusing on solutions, you found opportunities from that difficult situation. Does anyone want to share with us any of the difficult situation in which he or she was, but with positivity they were able to emerge victorious, they were able to learn from it, or to get something to benefit? Would anyone like to share? Okay, I, from a lot of my experiences, I will share just one. I shared it last time for those who have just come for the first time because this is an outstanding experience which I will never forget in my life. In 1995, my friends and I drive all the way from my country to South Africa. Our host is there waiting for us. We are supposed to, to arrive at 8 p.m. For one reason or the other, we were late, cutting a long, uh, long story short. So we end up struggling to find where is the mosque. Now, during those times, if you were in South Africa, if you asked for a mosque, they didn't know what a mosque was because majority of the Muslims were either Indian or from of Indian descent. So the mosque, the mosques were used. They used to call them Indian church. So unless you ask for an Indian church, you can't find a mosque. So we were con we were striving. Where is the mosque? 
In any case, we were able to find a place where to park our car, but the problem was where to sleep. So we wanted to go to a mosque where we would feel we were safe. So maybe we were in a wrong place at a wrong time. While we were walking, we saw a group of bandits, criminals, um, um, equipped with machetes, with knives and wooden clubs. So walking proudly on the streets, we said we are dead. So we, we, here we are, we are strangers, we don't know where we are going, we have a lot of, of bugs with us. So we, were start, we started brainstorming, what shall we do? Shall we appeal to their conscience? These people don't care about anyone, they care only about themselves, they are criminals. So even if you appeal to them, please forgive us, leave us alone, they won't listen to you. So first of all, we prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then we said, okay, we will put them in an awkward situation. What is the situation where we will go, we will... We will march towards them confidently with positive minds and we look we would look we will look them into the eyes and start praising them. So this is what we did. You know, you guys you look very you, you look very strong. It seems you are among the people who fought for the independence of your country. We are actually glad to be here. We used to support you. We wish we were strong enough to come and support your cause, fight alongside you. So we came to visit your country. We want to see how you are faring. And since we found you, we hope you will help us get where we were going. So we started praising them, looking them into the eyes, all of us, with confidence after praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they looked at each other. They were very angry. Then they said, okay, you guys, you're lucky. Never ever again walk outside at night at this time. So we asked them to take us to a mosque. We struggled to explain to them what a mosque was or what a mosque is. Because as I said, they used to call mosques Indian church. And we didn't know the term. So they took us up to the mosque and we were safe. So imagine if we said, oh, please help us. They, they wouldn't have cared about us. So this was a negative situation at the beginning, but with prayer and self-confidence, it was a positive experience. Because these people who were about to kill someone, rob him of his property or money, or, text any, or for one reason or the other kill the person, they were the ones who took us where we wanted to go. And they gave us an advice that don't walk outside at this time. So what I'm trying to say in every difficult situation in which you are with prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and self-confidence you can be victorious so a positive person will turn a negative situation into a positive situation a positive person will turn a disadvantage into an advantage for him but a negative person will see life as doom and gloom so in such a situation because he is negative he would say okay come and kill me I'm going to die so this is the this is one among the the the, uh, the stories of how you can turn a difficult situation into an opportunity. A positive person, if for example someone is jogging outside, the temperature is forty degrees Celsius, so he becomes dehydrated. He needs water. It's not easy for him to get clean water where he is. So he comes to a person who has half glass of water or a half bottle of water. So you give him the half. He would say, oh, thank you very much. In this situation, you've helped me because here it's difficult to get clean water. So he would continue thanking you because of half glass of water, because he is a positive person. A negative person will complain why the glass is not full. So imagine this person comes to you. You are in a desert. No any, no any infrastructure. No any clean water. You had only half a half glass of water or a half bottle of water and this person came to you who was dehydrated and you helped him with that half glass of water and he was very grateful to you of course you'd feel happy and if you had more you'd try to help him more but if he started you know you're giving me a half glass why didn't you feel it you will feel angry so this person who has a positive attitude because of his gratitude he can get even more but if he is a negative person, he will get less and he is the person to blame. So in most cases, people don't really get what they want, not because of the situation, not because of the circumstances, but because of them. So the blame goes to them. For example, someone goes to an interview. He has all the qualifications, but this person is a negative person. When they ask him a question, he's always negative. Another one, 
with maybe lesser qualifications, but this person has a strong attitude, he's a positive person, he will impress those interviewing him. And even though there is no any job opening for him, they will try to find a job for him. So in this case, I would invite Tony and Abu Huraira to come and, brain, uh, to come and role play with me. I will begin with Tony. So Abu Huraira, you can sit there in front, in the front seat while I'm beginning with Tony. So Tony, you, you can sit here, Tony. So, Tony is an IT technician. He comes to the Thai center. He's looking for a job. Abu Huraira is also an IT technician. He comes to the Thai center. He's looking for a job. So, both of them are equally qualified for the job. So, we are interviewing them to see who is more qualified than the other. So, in this case, we are not focusing much on the qualifications. We are focusing rather on the attitude of this person, if he is a positive person or not. So, as you can see, we will see if Tony or Abu Huraira will, um, will qualify to be employed by the Thai Center. Hi, Tony. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How are good, you? Good, good. I'm glad to meet you. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here, and it's so nice to see you. It's nice to see you, too. You see, the way he sits, he's very confident. A person who doesn't have self-confidence would be sitting on the brink of the chair. So the, way, the posture shows that he is a positive person. So how, Tony, how do you think your skills will help the Thai Center to grow? Well, in university I did so many projects. Mm -hmm. I w worked with programming, databases, networking, mm -hmm. and security. So Eye contact. So he's looking at me. He's not, looking, he's not fidgeting with his mobile, looking on the side, feeling shy. So eye contact. This is a sign of self-confidence. Yeah. yeah. So I did many projects like this. So mm -hmm. I have uh, a lot of knowledge and mm -hmm. I can solve a lot of problems. Even if there's something I don't know, I'll figure out how to solve the problem. and. And I'll, I'll do a lot of research. So what about if we have sperms in our server? Can you solve that problem? Yeah, definitely. Even if there's something I come across that I have trouble solving, I can always do research. I never like to leave things alone. I always like to be proactive. and, and Yeah, proactivity. Well. So employers like people who are proactive. He's going to do the research. So he will not allow any problem to bog him down. He will always try to solve the problem. And plus, he's smiling. Um, why are you interested in working at the Thai Center? Well, uh, actually, I want to live here in a Muslim country in Kuwait. So mm -hmm. I left my country, Canada, to work here. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, some people are uh, negative about the environment here, but I see a lot of opportunity, a lot of chances. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's a good place to be, and you're around so many other people. So I am assured that Tony wants to stay with us, even, the, even if the pay isn't good. The prime motivation is, him, is for him to come to a country where he can practice Islam. So even if we employ him, we know we'll be with him. So Tony, why did you leave your previous company where you were working? Well, I was working in a hospital mm -hmm. in Canada, and mm -hmm. so I just wanted to make a, a big change in my life. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to come to Kuwait in the Middle East, where you have lots of Muslims and mm -hmm. mosques and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I figure it's a better environment for me to grow spiritually. Ah, that's very good. So I think you can help us with first aid cases. If someone is injured since you worked in a hospital, you have experience, you can come to the rescue. Can yeah, you? that's right. And, and you know what? Working in a hospital is really good because a lot of people in Canada will just stay among their own culture. Mm -hmm. But when I worked in the hospital, I met a uh, lot, like everybody will be sick. So you would see Chinese people, Russians. So I was exposed to a lot of different cultures. And I think here at the Thai Center, that's important. Yeah, that's very important because actually we call the Thai Center a microcosm of the UN because it's a hodgepodge of many cultures over here. So your experience working with different cultures will help us here also working with different cultures that come to the Thai Center. So Tony, tell us about your past experiences. Uh, like uh, what specifically? Uh, experiences dealing with your employer, with the employees. For example, if your boss yelled at you, what did you do? If your employees were not, or your co-workers were not honest, what would you do in such a situation? Okay, yeah, I, I always uh, try to uh, figure out the, the best option. Mm -hmm. Even if the two option, if there's two negative options to choose, I try to choose the lesser negative. Mm -hmm. So I always, uh, you know, try to learn from my mistakes. Mm -hmm. If I see that there's uh, something I did wrong, I always try and learn from that. I don't just, you know, put myself down. I always think, okay, how could I do better? Uh, yeah, that, that's interesting. So, yeah. Tony, tell me, are you married? Uh, well, actually, you know, according to Canadian law, we're not really supposed to ask or answer that question. 
But if there's a reason you need to know, I could... Yeah, th there is a reason you need to know because, you know, here a lot of people are interested in marrying Westerners like you, a young person like you from <laughs> Canada. Some of them would be interested in marrying you because okay. they, you are an intelligent person from a developed country, looking so nice, young. So okay. we want you to be married so that you don't distract our, uh, some of our, uh, our guests who come to the Thai Center. Okay. So we want to help you marry. Uh, thank you. Well, in that case, I should let you know I am married. Okay, you're married. Yes. Are you not planning to marry a second wife? According to the culture here, you can have a second wife. No, one wife is okay. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, Tony. Then Abu Huraira. <laughs> yeah, have a seat. So, Abu Huraira, how are you doing? I'm not so well, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had a bad day. Uh, mm -hmm. I just happened to stumble across the Thai Center, is it mm -hmm. called? Mm -hmm. is it yeah, called yeah, the yeah, yeah, center? yeah, the Thai Center. Uh, you, you see the posture? Uh, leaning, he's not confident, he's not smiling, he's angry, even now I'm afraid. So, uh, Abu Huraira, I like your name. So, uh, from where did you get this name, Abu Huraira? Uh, I'm not sure what my father was thinking, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's not really something that's uh, accepted in the mm -hmm. Arab culture. Mm -hmm. So, I, 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 hope, I hope to change my name in the near future. Ah, okay. Um, maybe something more common, Abdullah. Mm -hmm. So, he's not proud even about his name. Uh, how do you think your experience can help us at the Thai Center? I'm not actually sure what you do at the Thai Center exactly, <laughs> uh, but I do need an income. Mm -hmm. I've, 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 I've come into this Middle East, mm -hmm. third world country, mm -hmm. um, and um, you know I need to make some income. Mm -hmm. I need mm -hmm. something to eat, mm -hmm. so I, I have to work. Uh, what are the perks? In other words, what are the benefits that you are expecting from the Thai Center? Well, I'm hoping for a really good salary. I, I know, I know that there's a lot of oil in this country, mm -hmm. um, and, and I know that you know everyone, everyone has seems to have a nice thaw, mm -hmm. and I have this brown one. Mm -hmm. So I want, like, I want the quality mm -hmm. white thawbs that the rest yeah, of the people are wearing. I also expect accommodation. Mm -hmm. um, I expect food to be bought to me, mm -hmm. and uh, my bills to be paid as well. Mm -hmm. So he's thinking in terms of what he wants, not in terms of what we want, unlike Tony. So tell me, Abu Huraira, why did you leave your previous company? Why did you decide to come and seek a job here? The, the person I was working with was more of a dictator than a boss. Mm -hmm. um, he expected me to do more than what was on my job description. Mm -hmm. In fact, on one occasion, I, I stormed into his office mm -hmm. and I told him exactly what I thought. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, he ended up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So, you mm -hmm. know, hopefully, that won't happen between me mm -hmm. and you. Mm -hmm. but so, uh, uh, this has has been an indication that he's a negative person. So he reached the point of fighting with boss. So I would be afraid that maybe the same thing would happen to me. So tell me, Abu Huraira, what do you think about the Thai Center? Uh, I saw on the way in actually there was a lot of litter. Mm -hmm. I think you should have more bins around the place mm -hmm. uh, and maybe some cleaners as well. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of maids in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, in Kuwait, mm -hmm. maybe employing a few more. I know you don't pay them much, mm -hmm. so you should definitely employ mm -hmm. a few more mm -hmm. and the place would be a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. So when you are looking for a job, you don't begin criticizing the company. Even if you saw anything wrong, you don't mention it because they know this per they, will, uh, they will get the first impression that this person is grumpy. He likes to complain all the time. So, tell us about your past experiences. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've, I've even made kebabs in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, and, and obviously that would, would help mm -hmm. you guys here. Mm -hmm. I know you don't have much, mm -hmm. uh, many mm -hmm. types of colorful foods. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you probably want some more. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you're fairly slim. Mm -hmm. uh, you think you need to put on some more weight and things like this. So yeah. I would definitely help in that regard. Yeah, uh, co commenting on the one interviewing him. Actually, this is not acceptable if you are going for an interview. For example, a lady, if she's interviewed by a man that you know your tie doesn't match your shirt, this will put him off. So they, they, they will get an impression that you like to meddle into other people's affairs. So this could be one of the reasons why you are not employed. So thank you, Abu Huraira. We will think about it and we will give you a call. I'm sure I'll have Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so what do you think? Who would get the job? Tony or Abu Huraira? Tony would get the job, right? 
So it's not about your qualifications, it's not about your personality, it's not about your gender, it's about how you present yourself in an interview. And actually there are a lot of tips that they tell you if you're going for an interview, you have to avoid such traits because they may give a wrong impression about you. So we continue. Um, you see these two people, husband and wife maybe, they're not talking to one another, they're angry with one another, both of them are negative, so where do you think the marriage will go? And actually, I gave you a story of two sons who were inspired. So such kind of people, you avoid them, and they will, it, this will not take them anywhere, anywhere. If they were positive people, they would think in the direction of finding solutions to their problems. So somehow, many people you can help to reduce or eliminate or see how many people. So if you want to be a positive person, if you want to rid yourself of negativity, see how many people you can help to reduce or eliminate their own worry. So in the process of helping someone, this is the best method for you to learn how to become a positive person, to become how to become a stress-free person. So by helping others, you are actually learning. And actually they say the best way, if not the best, among the best ways of learning is to teach. Because when you are teaching someone, you are looking for materials. You'll be asking yourself questions, assuming that if they ask me this question, how shall I answer? You will research a lot. So if anyone is suffering from this problem who is a negative person and you you want to eliminate negativity try to help that person by helping that person you are learning a lot of things by by, your, uh, by yourself and you can learn even from the situation of that person so it's not only a process that you are just giving when you teach you give and learn there are so many ways that when you teach you learn from each other so if you are a negative person and you want to be positive one of the ways is to teach someone who is negative how to be positive try to help them try to encourage them try to boost their morale by doing that with the blessing of God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will try to eliminate your worry or you will you will reduce your stress or your problems so in helping another person to overcome worry or any problem you get greater power over it within yourself so you will be thinking about yourself you will be thinking about the processes that you, you are going through to teach this person. You will be thinking about the situation of that person. And in the end, it will help you by yourself. So this is among the methods of eliminating self-worry and self-doubt. Make a list of your friends to determine who is the most positive thinker and deliberately cultivate his society. So among your friends, you have some of them who are optimists, some of them who are pessimists, and some of them who are in the middle. So make a list, categorize them. Try to spend much time with those who are positive and less time with those who are negative. So you learn from the ones who are positive and whatever you learn from them, you share it with those who are negative. So in other words, do not abandon your negative friends, but for a while stay away from them associate with positive ones so when you learn the skills of positivity then you come and share with your negative friends you are acquired you are you are uh, the the thought pattern the positive thought patterns that you've acquired and another important factor is personal relations so for example you have people who are introverts they don't care about making friends to them they would claim that you know I don't benefit from friends I don't need them I rather stay by myself this is not true according to research as we will see so to be liked is of profounder importance than mere ego satisfaction so someone wants to assert that he is important he has the skills he's a, a person who has to be looked upon so this person who has who is trying to satisfy his ego in so many ways, it's, it's allowed unless he do, if he doesn't look down upon others. But the fact of being with friends, being appreciated, is even more important than satisfying your ego. So you need people around you. For example, people who buy expensive things, clothes, who build good houses, 
one of the motivations is for the people to appreciate them, to praise them on whatever they do. Sometimes friends, when they buy new clothes, a new watch, a new car, they will come and parade the car in front of their friends. What do you think about my car? So the more the people appreciate it, the more he feels good. And if people criticize him, he feels bad. So it's naturally inborn in our, in our psychic equilibrium, in our, more, in our physical constitution, that we need people to see us. We need people to appreciate us. We need to show our skills to the people so that they get impressed by us. And when they do that, we feel happy. So as necessary as ego satisfaction, it is to your success in life, normal and satisfactory personal relations are even more important. I know someone, he's just an acquaintance, who claims that, you know, I don't care about what my boss says, my co-workers say about me once I do my job. If it's perfect, I don't care about them, whether they appreciate it or not, I don't care. This same person, sometimes he comes complaining, you know, I did this project, my manager didn't comment on it, my friend didn't say anything about it. Yet, he's, the same person says he doesn't care. So, in other words, he's not being true to himself. Every person wants to be appreciated in one way or the other. So, if this is the case, then you have to make sure you make friendship with people around you who are positive, who will acknowledge your achievements, and who will not judge you. Judging people, judging being around people who judge you sometimes puts you down it will demoralize you and actually one of the thing one of the reasons why people have friends is that you like a person whom you can vent on whom you can vent out your anger so if you're angry with someone or if you're depressed or if you are stressed out you need someone who can listen to you so just listening will help you vent out for example there is a lady who called me she said you know I have a problem with my husband he does this one two three four five six I would like you to give me advice although I keep saying that you know I'm not a marriage counselor but because I give Friday sermons in English in some mosques people insist that you know help us please my marriage is on the our marriage is on the brink so I said okay you come on this and that day at your convenience we will discuss these issues and see how we can help you so the lady came she talked for 45 minutes I was listening writing down my notes what I will say after she's done so after 45 minutes she stood up and said thank you Mr. Hassan for listening and she went so primarily she called me she wanted advice she wanted me to listen to her story and tell her what I have according to Islam according to my experience but finally after venting out she went so apparently she wanted someone to listen to her and that was one of the reasons she wanted to meet me so sometimes you need a friend who does who will not judge you who will just listen to you and this will help you to be a positive person because whenever you have problems you have a person whom you can relate with the person whom you can complain to who will listen to you but imagine you have a friend every time you have a problem he says you are the problem you are the problem you are the problem you don't like to see you don't like to meet with such a friend again so tony will tell us some of the traits that we have to maintain in order to keep friendship with people. So if you could listen to what Tony is, is reading. Facebook and Twitter feeds of our friends. 
Even a lot of novels you may read will have negative endings. Be a positive voice in, in a world where everyone sounds a little like a, a little negative. Being positive will make you a pleasure to talk to, and more people will want to talk. To you. Thank you, Tony. So imagine, for example, you are in a social gathering of friends. You met somewhere in a restaurant or somewhere else. So you're discussing some issues. Someone cracks a joke to make you laugh. So this person who cracks a joke, he wants the joke to be his. He doesn't want anyone to claim that he knew about this joke. So all of a sudden, someone doesn't smile, someone doesn't laugh, and he says, I know about it, I heard about it several years ago, or several weeks ago. So you're putting down this person. So this person, he thought maybe this joke has never been told by anyone. He wanted to be the first one to crack the joke. And now you say you know about it. This means that you want to assert your superiority over this person. This person won't like you. Or for example, someone is giving a public lecture. He, 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 he he imparts some facts about something and then you come up and say you know your facts are not true you know I attended lectures in this and that country so this person won't like you so there are a lot of things that if we want to maintain our friendship with the people we don't give them a clue that we disapprove of them so even if for example they, they tend to do a mistake then we have to make sure that we sit with them when we privately to point out those mistakes that they did. So being in a social group with friends, this is very important. It will help you to become a positive person. But if you choose to be alone, you will continuously be a negative person because you don't have people to relate with. You don't have people to complain to. You don't have people who can give you advice and make you as a person with a strong uh, personality. So a psychologist by the name William James said, one of the deepest drives of, of human nature is the desire to be appreciated. One of the deepest desires of human nature is to be appreciated. Either to be appreciated by your husband, by your teacher, by your employer, by your children, you name it. So even a, a kid, when the kid tried, tries to walk, so at the beginning she, he or she is crawling, so they try to walk. So when they make it, they stand up for when they stand up for one minute or two, when you clap, they feel they want to do it more. They feel happy. So human beings as well, they need you to appreciate them. They need you to encourage them, especially if you are a friend to that person. So your encouragement of this person will make him a more positive person. He will know that, you know, I am doing the right thing. Let, let me continue doing it. So as in education, they say you have a stick and a carrot. But when you want to... Inv to to help people to be positive, you concentrate on the carrot, not on the stick. So, uh, for example, in many companies, many institutions, many schools, many other places, or, um, to name but a few, when you do something right, sometimes they don't appreciate you. But when you do something wrong, they will inflate it and everyone will know about it. So this will diminish your self-esteem. This will diminish your positivity. You will start being a negative person that you know when I do something right, no one mentions anything about it. No one appreciates me for that. So why should I continue doing good things? When I do bad things, people will always criticize me. So in as much as you would criticize someone when he does something wrong, when they do something right, be quick to appreciate them because this is in the nature of mankind. If anyone says that they don't care whether people appreciate them or not maybe they are not they are not being honest and actually there is a story of an owner of a company he had a very huge company in the US and this person was very knowledgeable very skilled very contained with self-confidence and he would continuously tell people that, you know, I don't care what people say about me. I do what's right for me. If it's beneficial to me, I do it. If it's not, I don't do it. Guess what happened? Time came for him to retire. He retired from his own company and he invested all the powers in his son. So his son was now the CEO of the company doing all the duties for the well-being of the company. So one day this retired father comes to his company, he sits in, in an office, people come to greet him, but no one talks to him more than that. It's just, hello, hello, they go away. And he was looking how people were at people, how they were surrounding, swarming his son, asking for solutions, asking for help, asking questions, and he felt bad. 
He said, you know, here I am, no one is caring about me. And my son, everyone is looking for him. So the fact that no one was looking for him to ask questions, to seek solutions, it made him feel bad. So this is to prove that we need people around us. If you want to be positive, you have to be in a circle of positive friends who will encourage you, who will listen to you when you are in trouble, who will try to help, who will help you to solve your problems. So um, some people are, are suffering from one of the most pathetic and unhappy experiences in life because of their basic desire to be sought after is not satisfied. So they don't get, no one is looking for them, no one is asking for them for solutions, so these people will feel bad. And actually there is this quote, it goes, appreciation can make a day, even change a life. Your willingness to put it into words is all that is necessary. You know, sometimes your children, they don't need gifts. They need just a word of appreciation. Your employees, they don't need sometimes gifts. They need you to appreciate, to acknowledge what they did right and appreciate them for that. So if you do that, this will boost their morale. This, this will make them more proactive. This will make them more positive that I am doing the right thing. They will be willing to do it again and again. So appreciation is very important. Even in Islam, the Prophet ﷺ says, if someone does you a favor, thank him. If you can't thank him, pray for him. If you can't pray for him, if you can't thank he says, if anyone does you a favor, reward him. If you can't reward him, thank him. If you can't thank him, pray for him. So there is always reward and he would always encourage his companions who will bring me the news of the enemy and he will go to paradise and he would give them dick, uh, gifts on different occasions and these were companions with strong faith but the Prophet ﷺ made a point of encouraging them in different ways each person according to his idiosyncrasies according to his whims and desires if someone desired a word he would give it to him if someone desired money he would give it to him so there were different ways of encouraging his companions so what about us normal human beings so if you want to help someone to be positive, you have always to encourage them. If they do something right, comment, in, comment on it. Appreci appreciate them for that. So here they say a university psychology department conducted an analysis of the personality traits by which people are liked or disliked. So things that make people liked or disliked. 100 traits were significantly analyzed and it was reported that one must have at least 46 favorable traits in order to be liked. So out of 100, at least you need to have 46. And if you have these 46, people will like you. People will surround you. People will come to you asking for solutions. People will come to you asking for ideas. And this will make you positive because, you know, people trust your skills. People trust your knowledge. But if people ignore you, you will feel that there is something bad with you. And you will start having negative thoughts about yourself. So all major religions, including Islam, they talk about caring about others, loving others, caring about them, trying to solve their problems. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, if someone goes with a person to solve one of his problems, it's better for him and it's better in front of Allah. It's more beloved to Allah than performing i'tikaf in the masjid of the Prophet. You know, how many rewards does someone get when he prays in the masjid of the Prophet? Does anyone know how many rewards? 500. Does anyone know how many? 1,000. So if you pray in Al-Masjid Al-Haram, it's 100,000 rewards, one prayer. If you pray in the Masjid of the Prophet وسلم, you get 1,000 rewards for one prayer. If you pray in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, you get 500. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, walking with your brother to solve his problem is more beloved to God, to Allah, than praying, staying in the Masjid of the Prophet for one month. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, is encouraging the Muslims to help one another, to help one another solve their problems. And this will boost the morale of the other Muslim when he sees that when he's in trouble, people come to him, compete with one another to help him. This will make him a positive person that, you know, in the community, I have value. No one looks down upon him, upon me. But if people ignore him, this person will think otherwise. So it's very important to help the people. And by that, you are actually helping yourself there is this quote how you treat others is how you really feel inside of you how you treat others is really how you feel inside of you how do we interpret this how do we interpret this quote this quote how you treat others is really how you feel about yourself inside of you 
How can we interpret it? Can anyone try? Yes, sister? Uh, like, sometimes, mm -hmm. if you, like, inside don't feel good, you'll also, like, treat the people really depending on how you feel. But if you feel really happy, you're, like, uh, going to somebody, going to, for example, your sister and saying, mm -hmm. you're really beautiful today, mm -hmm. and naturally how you feel, like, mm -hmm. you feel good inside, and you're giving the positivity to others. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. Have you ever gone to a shop, you find a shopkeeper not in good moods, you ask him how much is this watch? 30 kd. Please give me a discount. If you don't, if you want to buy, buy. If you don't, want go to another shop. So will you? Will he sell? So because of negative attitude, maybe he didn't wake up well. Maybe he is suffering from some problems, and this is reflecting on how he's doing the business. So how he's feeling inside of him reflects on how he treats customers. What else? How can we interpret it? Yes, Abu Huraira. Yeah. The previous days, you come to work with that same negativity, and you, you might end up like lashing out on the kids or you know losing your patience very quickly. Uh, but then later, when you reflect, you find it's because maybe it's an argument you had with someone at home or mm -hmm. something else, uh, and it's not actually you. Yeah, and and you know, if you are a teacher, for example, the moment you enter in your classroom with negativity, the children will be more naughty. But when you are positive, you enter with self-confidence, you will be able to control them. And actually, they enjoy it when you freak out. When you yell at them, they enjoy it and they become more, uh, more naughty. So it's better you enter with self If you quarrel with your wife, with your husband, if you didn't have a good night, leave it at home. When you come into school, try to fake. Even if you are not in moods, try to fake a good personality because it's infectious. They will look, they, they are very smart. When you are not in good moods, they will capitalize on that. Being more naughty so that you yell at them and they become more happy. They start sharing jokes with one another about you. Even they call you nicknames because of how you behave in the classroom. What else? How do we interpret this? Yes, sister. Sometimes, uh, you know, I tell people, I have experience before and I want people to benefit. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you judge people. Mm -hmm. You just judge them. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't like you. They, they are this, that. And you see sometimes women sitting somewhere and they say like, and he's feeling this, he's feeling this, but it's what the person is really feeling. Mm -hmm. It's uh, sometimes judging when you judge somebody. Mm -hmm. What you say that the other person is doing mm -hmm. is what you really. Decide. Yes, yes, that's true. And actually, scholars of Islamic jurisprudence have said. المؤمن يطلب المعاذير لسلامة باطنه والمنافق يطلب العيوب لخبث باطنه So a believer, he will always find excuses. So he deals with someone. For example, you visited someone and he didn't receive you wholeheartedly. You will find excuses for him. Maybe he quarreled with his wife. Maybe because I didn't give him, a, 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 I didn't call him that I'm coming. I didn't notify him. Maybe he's suffering. So you will always find, so you will find always excuses because in your heart you are a good person you are a positive person so you are judging people according to how you are inside of you but if you are a negative person and someone happens to do something wrong you will always misinterpret his actions because of how you feel inside of you this is why according to psychology they say if someone is a thief he will assume everyone is a thief if someone is corrupt he will assume everyone is corrupt if someone is a liar he will assume everyone is a liar so you tell him something you're lying you're lying, you're lying. So it's easy for him to mention lie, lie, yet he's the one who lies. So it will reflect on what you are, the way you treat the others. And people who are smart, they can tell which kind of personality you are. So by being negative, by not being in good moods, it affects you. It doesn't affect the people you are dealing with. So sometimes you lose out, you complain about the place, about the person who was interviewing you, yet it's you. So we lose out in so many situations because of how we behave, not because of the person, not because of the environment. This is where the issue of self-confidence is very important. Positive mental food. You know, I'm not going to generalize. But I have noticed when I travel, for example, you meet with non-Muslims, especially from the West. Someone will have a program that on my travel from Kuwait to the UK, I'm going to read a novel. So I will read half of it. So when I, as I'm waiting at Kuwait airport, I'll read 20 pages. 
in the aeroplane I will read 30 tomorrow I will read 20 this majority of the non-Muslims especially from the West they like to read Muslims not all of them some of them when they are waiting at a, in a transit launch in an airport they will either be gossiping chit chatting or fidgeting with the mobiles so they are not feeding their brains yet when it comes to food for the body they, they are the first ones to go and eat the food and they eat a lot some of them not all of them so in as much as you feed your body you have to feed your brain we are body soul and brain so why do we always concentrate on the body we forget the soul and the brain so people for example undergo cosmetic surgery they want to look beautiful handsome someone would pay a lot of money to uh, to to straighten the nose the cheeks the other parts of the body yet this same person does not care about the spiritual enlightenment does doesn't care about mental development so in as much as you eat good food for your body you have to care about your brain so just as your body is healthy to the degree to which you eat healthy and nutritious food your mind is healthy to the degree to which you feed it with mental protein rather than mental candy so read books magazines and articles that are educational inspirational or motivational religious etc so if you are a negative person try to read books about that try to read stories of successful people who were at the beginning positive and then they became negative try to read books about people who were suffering who came from from grass to grace they suffered a lot and they were able to make it so this will inspire you that if someone was a street kid and was able to organize Organize himself to put himself together to start looking for a job and he became a millionaire I can do it so this will give you a sense of direction this will give you self-confidence reading about others so it's not easy to shift from positivity to neg uh, from negativity to positivity so you have to do a lot of research so feed your mind with information and ideas that are uplifting and that make you feel happy and more confident about yourself and your world you know they say you are what you eat and you are what you read so if you read good stuff it will have an impact on you if you read bad stuff it will have an impact on you so unfortunately many people even when they render efforts to read what they read is negative so, so for example you, you see someone reading novels fiction yes you can you can benefit maybe language maybe in terms of imagination but it would be better to find which problems you're suffering from and read books about those problems if you have problems with your husband with your spouse so read about marriages how to in, to strengthen your your relationship with your husband or with your wife if for example you're suffering from um, from forgetfulness you always forget read books about that in other words where you feel you are lacking find books read them so that you get ideas to improve yourself so in other words when you are choosing a book to to read ask yourself how will it help me in my physical growth spiritual growth and mental growth so yes you can read about about food and actually many people like to read books about food menus how to prepare some dishes but at the same time you have to read about your mind how to improve your mind how to improve your spiritual enlightenment this is very important because you are not only body you are body mind and soul so you have to feed all these three aspects of your life so listen to positive constructive cds and audio programs in your car and on your ipod it is easy unfortunately many people just listen to songs and sometimes songs don't have even meanings instead of listening to something constructive they listen to something negative something that will di dis distract them from their common purpose from their goals so it's very important to concentrate on what you read what you listen to feed your mind continuously with positive messages that help you think and act better and make you more capable and competent in your field for example if you are a teacher read about how to control children read about how to deal with difficult bosses read about the environment read about the culture read about there are a lot of things that you can read about which can re can enrich your experience talk to people who have been teaching for a long time in different ways so you are gaining experience from books and from people who have had more experience than you so here i put two pictures together as you can see these people are reading maybe it's a book club and these people are eating so in as much as you feed your body you have to feed your mind 
And in as much as you feed your body in a group, you have to feed your mind in a group, supporting one another. If someone is lazy to read, they feel they feel uh, they uh, they don't feel. Uh, interested in reading but when you are in a group where they discuss ideas there is a lot that you can learn because people come from different backgrounds have different understanding have different whims and desires so when you read the same book and listen to different experiences this will enrich your experience by yourself but most of the time we concentrate on the food if there is a buffet somewhere people will throng that place You'll find people, hundreds, but if there is a book club, something very important to their minds, they don't care. And this, and they less, less do they know that there is a correlation between the body and the mind. And actually, we have thoughts. The thoughts will affect your emotional condition. And your emotional condition you will affect your physical condition. So someone, for example, wakes up in the morning, he or she is not happy. Maybe this person has had bad dreams at night. So he or she will have negative thoughts. And these negative thoughts will make this person cynical, afraid. Maybe something will happen to me because I saw uh, when I, uh, I dreamt of an accident. I was driving. I knocked someone. Maybe I will. So this person begins to shiver. He, be he or she begins to be afraid a lot. And in this state of being afraid, he or she she may really make an accident because he or she is not concentrating so he's just they have put it in their psyche that you know my day will be bad I will knock someone I will abuse someone I'll fight with someone or have you ever for example heard, seen someone quarreling with someone abusing someone yelling at someone at the end of the day this person comes to you and says I have a headache so the headache came, came from 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 yelling so the thoughts will affect your emotions and the emotions will affect your body but most of the time we concentrate on the body we forget about the thoughts which is the engine of the body so it's very important to feed uh, your mind our physical condition is determined very largely by our emotional condition and our emotional condition uh, our emotional life is profoundly regulated by our thoughts about life so thoughts emotions physical condition for example they say chronic stress from negative attitudes and feelings of helplessness hopelessness can upset the can upset the body's hormone balance and deplete the brain of chemicals required for feelings of happiness so if you are always stressed out because of your feelings you feel you are hopeless you feel you will not succeed you have negative attitudes about each and everyone so this will upset the distribution of the hormones in your body that make a balance between your feelings and your thoughts and your body and this will have a toll on your immune system so in the process you'll find the person who is always negative being an emotional person yelling every time being cynical and he will he will pay the price for that so in the end he will be sick so the sickness came from the thoughts so if you are a positive person this will help you to avoid some diseases some avoidable diseases so you see for example here we have this old man he has a lot to be stressed about but he's he's happy and yet you see this young woman She's stressed out, even the office is not well arranged, books are thrown here and there. So imagine, for example, you want to employ her. You came to her office and you found her in such a situation. You won't employ her. So it's very important to be positive all the time. So poorly managed anger or, or repressed anger. So poorly managed or repressed anger is also related to a multitude of health conditions such as hypertension, cardiovascular disease, digestive disorders and infection. So sometimes you see people who are negative, who are stressed out, most of the time they will keep going to the toilet. Most of the time. This is one of the reasons of these people being um, emotionally uh, worn out because of the, because they always have negative attitudes they're always angry they are always sad they will always misinterpret things if you say something positive they will construe it to be negative so these people they would they would easily uh, acquire such diseases like hypertension cardiovascular disease and actually those who are always jealous 
those who are always angry it's easy for them to get heart attack and some heart diseases and also they will have problems with digestion they will suffer from constipation a person who il- who is always sad who is always worried who ha- who has a low self esteem they will always suffer from constipation because digestion is not taking place uh, properly i know of some people who are always dejected who are always sad most of the time they have problems with with uh, with constipation so you avoid anger you avoid stress by good thought patterns so you know as a muslim if you are a believer if you are a muslim you know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala god is with you so long as as long as you are closer to him he will be with you he will protect you no harm will come your way unless it's predetermined with allah if anyone threatens you you know another problem people who are not positive if for example he's an employee of a control freak boss if the boss doesn't talk to him or her it's a problem they won't eat food if the boss yells at them they will not eat their food lunch supper and they end up suffering because of just the boss the boss didn't talk to them because these people lack self confidence why doesn't he talk to me why does he talk to others why didn't he look at me why does he look at others maybe he doesn't like my job maybe he will fire me tomorrow so you start having entertaining such uh, anxieties and this will cause you a lot of problems but if you are a positive person you know allah is with me i will do my job the best i can whether they appreciate it or not i will do my job so nothing will will will, will threaten you but the negative ones it's a problem so other heart conditions such as those that affect your heart muscle valves or rhythms also are considered forms of heart disease so if someone for example is always stressed out someone is always angry this will will affect the valves in the heart the rhythm the heartbeat they will also cause some other diseases in the muscles of the heart so a scientist by the name Barbara Fredrickson ha- says that positive emotions have two important effects of course there are many Im- effects but according to her research she concluded that there are two they broaden our perspective of the world thus inspiring more creativity wonder and options so for example you are working somewhere you are a positive person for one reason or the other you are not happy with the job so your positivity says let me look for another job i'm a positive person so you look for another job so you will find out that the other job conditions are better than where you were because of your positivity so it will make you think effectively ponder about about solutions so when you have a problem you don't focus on the problem per se but you rather focus on solutions and you are confident that your solutions will work and th- with this confidence you reach a solution i told you of a person a lady who graduated from a college of education she was looking for a job for a long time she was not lucky to get the job so she went to her father complained to him her father told her to sell part of his land and she started her own school it's one of the most proper schools in where in that area so because of positivity this person was able to establish a school but other negative people would say you know you have to be a company you have to be a millionaire so how can i sell just one plot and begin a school so you will be bogged down because of your negativity so if you are positive you always focus on solutions and what seems to be a problem it will be a blessing in disguise for example this lady who was not given a job she wasn't dejected she was positive so because she didn't get the job she thought of being an employer herself and she is now an employer so if she was a negative person she would just say okay let me go and work in a restaurant or be a street cleaner she would settle for something less than her education but because of her positivity she looked high and actually she got with the blessings of God of Allah she got what she wanted so positive emotions will build over time they will create what they call emotional resilience so whenever you are in a problem this problem will not wear you down this problem will rather make you strong so resilient people do not let adversity define them you're not defined by a problem so you find sometimes a person a person with problems the even the way they dress the way they look the way they walk it will tell you this person is in trouble but positive people you can't tell that this person is suffering because they know i'm in trouble right now but time will come when i will find solutions i will become victorious so they walk high they walk tall Uh, the negative ones they get easily bogged down to the ground so resilient people do not let adversity define them define them they rather 
find resilience, resilience by moving towards a goal beyond themselves, transcending pain and grief by perceiving bad times as a temporary state of affairs. So they know I'm now going through bad times, but these bad times are just temporary. Time will come when I will be victorious. And they benefit from this time of trial by evaluating themselves. What did I do wrong? Why did I do wrong? What should I do? And they try to talk to people who can help them. Even when they consult with people, they are positive. So I have this problem. What do you suggest to be a solution? So they don't just say, you know, I have a problem. I can't do anything. They are positive, even in their questions. What can I do? How can I solve the problem? Uh, after five years, I have this ambition. How can I get over there? Even the way they ask questions, it is positive. So this is a person who has been in trouble, but the, the thought process of him is positive, and this makes him able to find solutions to his problems. Um, we have training. Actually, I'm going. Um, yeah, bloom where you are. So sometimes someone is employed, and this person, the all the employees of the company, they feel threatened by this new employee that you know she or he is going to get my position. So intentionally, they still feeding him or her with negative information about the company. So you came to this company, they don't pay well, they don't pay on time, we have this and that problems. Because they're afraid, they're threatened by the presence of this person. So they want to discourage this person to leave the job so that maybe they get that position. So how many times, for example, you talk to people, employees of a company, they tell you that, you know, next year I will resign. They're not paying me, the boss is not good. Next year you go there, you find them. After next year you find them, 10 years, 20 years, still working in that company. So when you find yourself in such an environment, don't care about what they say. Ask yourself, which other place can I work apart from here? If I resign from this job, will I easily get another job? And if I stay here, what will happen? So if you find that you don't have any solution except to work in that place, so bloom where you are. This means read about that position. Ask people who have experience. For example, you've never taught special needs kids. And now you are employed by a school to deal with special needs. You don't have any training whatsoever. You need the job, you need the money, you have applied in so many places, you didn't have any opportunity to get a job. So what you do is do a research how to deal with them. Talk to teachers who have been teaching them. Go to other schools, ask, research. Try your best to make, to make your presence acknowledged in the school. So try to help as many people as you can. So this will give you confidence. So even the people who are doing menial jobs, make friendship with them. You know, in many places, people look down upon those doing menial jobs. But there, there are a lot of ideas that you can get from them. And actually, some people underestimate those people. And sometimes your success can be based on how you treat those people. Just one example in the book, of, uh, in the book written by um, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Hearts and Make Friends. He talks of a person who was working for a Coca-Cola company. He was a marketing manager. So this person wanted to sell to a certain company. He wanted to strike a deal with them to sell to them their, their Coca-Cola uh, beverages. So he was given, he was accorded an interview with the CEO of that company that he wanted to deal with. So because he was confident, he had talked to the CEO, so he didn't even greet those people at the reception desk. So he just went directly to meet with the CEO, ignoring these receptionists. Little did he know that the boss does not take any decision without consulting with people at the reception because they have been in the company for a long time more than him. He didn't know that. So he comes, you know, I am have an appointment with the CEO, these people, what will they do? So he goes to talk to the CEO. The CEO doesn't like his offer. So he says, okay, we will call you after three days. The man goes back to his manufacturing company. So the CEO comes down to ask the receptionists what they think about that person. All of them were negative. So the CEO said, I will never call him again. But the other one, another person who was very good with them, greeting everyone, when they were asked, 
they said he's a good person so the CEO gave him the job so you don't underestimate anyone in whatever place you are working with sometimes they have ideas which you do not expect so you ask those people doing the menial job how can you do your work how does it work in that place in that school how, what experiences have they had with the with the special needs students so this will help you so they say be like a flower that grows through a crack in the concrete sometimes we have to make the best of our situations and bloom where we've been planted and there is this quote all the flowers all the flowers of all the tomorrows are in the seeds of today so the flowers that will bloom tomorrow and after tomorrow are still in the seeds today another one every flower must grow through dirt so how do you expect to go to a company and institution to find roses all over there will be problems and problems differ from one situation to another so rather than focusing on the problems of the company focus on yourself how will you educate yourself how will you enrich your CV even if you don't continue working here the skills that you acquire will help you to get a job in another place so what do you think how do you think we can interpret this this quote here all the flowers of all the tomorrows are in the seeds today how can you interpret it does anyone know how we can yes Abu Huraira yeah you, you 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 reap the fruits of your hard work so you plant the fruits today and you'll reap the fruits tomorrow so if you are employed in a company you are a new employee you have you don't have enough self-confidence you feel maybe anytime they will fire you so bloom empower yourself make friends with everyone don't comment on anyone's uh, attire if someone comes don't say your tie doesn't match your clothes don't say for example you you've lost weight you have to be fat so concentrate on the positive sides of the people you are dealing with this will boost your morale it will also make you a positive person because you know now you have the skills even if they fire you you have enough skills to get a job somewhere else so everything begins from scratch so you begin if you you're given that opportunity you try your best uh, to to be positive and actually uh, we are off out of time but let me go to the food that you have to eat if you are a positive person if you are a negative person we have avocados these fruits are among the healthiest ones it's important to note that these green powerhouse powerhouses are packed with monosaturated fats that help to keep your blood sugar levels steady and improve the glow of your skin so if you are a lady for example you want your skin to shine don't only depend on creams you eat avocados they will help you to shine and if your husband wasn't appreciating your beauty after some time he will start doing that the avocados they contain vitamin k and folate the the avocados will prevent clots in the brain as well as help improve cognitive functions especially both memory and concentration so for example you are a student you have problems with concentration avocados will help you you are a student you always forget avocados will help you and actually some people who do not have who are always negative about themselves these are the people who don't have strong memory so they learn something they forget they learn something they forget eventually they become negative they say we can't make it they lose hope so the avocados will help you to become a person of self-esteem so um actually beets beet what they call beetroots these root vegetables are some of the most nutri nutritious plants they reduce inflammation are high in cancer protecting antioxidants and help rid your blood of toxins the natural nitrates in beets boost blood flow to the brain so the blood flow if you eat beetroots they will boost the speed of the blood the blood flow to your brain helping with mental performance so if you have a good mental performance this will boost the uh, will boost how you view yourself will give you confidence plus during tough workouts the beats will help boost your energy and performance levels so for example you are going to run you're going to jog or you have competition in marathon you eat beetroots so no one for example will will accuse you of anti-doping because beetroots are natural so they will help you to they will help provide you with energy so we have blueberries 
They have many great health benefits. They are among the highest antioxidant rich foods. They contain vitamin C, vitamin K, and fibers. Because of their high levels of gallic acid, blueberries are especially good at protecting our brains from degeneration and stress. So someone who is 60 years old, 70 years old, the blueberries will help him. And for example, if you have a positive spouse, husband or wife, so try to give them blueberries. This will help them. Bone broth. Bone broth is the ultimate food for healing your gut and in turn healing your brain. So this ancient food is full of health benefits ranging from boosting your immune system, overcoming leaky gut, improving joint health and overcoming food allergies. So it's also high in collagen, which helps reduce intestinal inflammation, and it has healing amino acids like proline and glycine, which will keep your immune system functioning properly and help improve your memory. So again, if you have problem with memory, drink soup made of, uh, of bones. And actually, uh, some ladies, uh, especially from India and Sri Lanka, they know how to, uh, to prepare such a soup. So if you're going to uh, if you're going to have an exam or if you're learning, you don't trust your memory, after praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is very good for you. So they say bone mar uh, bones are basically 50% protein. So cooking them in a broth will extract the protein and amino acids like collagen, glycine, and glucosamine that are then converted by your body into energy, stronger muscles, and more effective immune system. And actually, there is a correlation between stronger muscles, strong immune system, with the way your brain functions, and with your emotions. And actually, I will read to you some of the benefits of exercising, performing physical exercises. So if you are a negative person, another remedy is to work out. To go out, jog, swim, run. This will boost your morale. And actually, it said here, Improved self-esteem is a key psychological benefit of regular physical activity. So the regular physical activity will boost your, your self-esteem. When you exercise, your body releases chemicals called endorphins. These endorphins interact with the receptors of your brain that reduce your perception of pain. So when you exercise, at the end of it, maybe at the beginning, you will feel the pain, but during the euphoria, feeling happy after achieving such, ex such uh, a big achievement, then you feel you, you, your pain will be reduced and you will feel happy and in the end, you will be motivated. Endorphins also trigger a positive feeling in the body. For example, the feeling that follows a run or a workout is often des des described as euphoric which is a feeling of intense excitement and happiness. That feeling, known as runners up, can be accompanied by a positive and energizing outlook on life. So that feeling of euphoria that you get after running, swimming, after doing any physical exercise, it will boost your perception of life. It will make you a positive person. So we've discussed a lot of mechanisms to make you a positive person including some types of food you can always research on them and actually the slides are the slides are many i can email them to you if you want if you need them you can give me an email address and i can email them to you so um if there is any questions any comments you're free to ask you're free to give to air out your comments any questions comments about the Mm -hmm. And I thought that that's what I got sick. Mm -hmm. And I stopped because I said, somehow I got sick. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking it was the bones. Mm -hmm. But now that you say that, mm -hmm. I got sick eating the bones. Yeah, and actually the bone marrow is very good. The soup itself is good. The bone marrow is good. You can ask some Indians and Sri Lankans here. They, they know how to prepare the, the broth, the bone broth in a good way that can help you. Yes, I know that bone. You, you know it, huh? <laughs> okay. Yes, sister. Yes. Okay. You said something about pretending being in a good mood mm -hmm. to teaching the, the kids. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I read something about uh, the physical uh, posture, mm -hmm. how it affects your mental uh, status. 
So, uh, from what I uh, mm -hmm. said before, mm -hmm. that's true. Then, if you're upset, then try to smile and yes, yes. stand in a good way. Yeah. Breathe. That will also another way to be positive. Yes. And actually, another thing, do not fake your personality, do not fake your nationality. I used to teach with a teacher. He's originally from Lebanon, but he has the Canadian nationality. So the students whom he was teaching, they sensed it that he's not originally Canadian. So they kept asking him, are you originally Arab? He would say, no, 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 no. Even he would pretend he never knew Arabic, yet he spoke Arabic fluently. So what happened? The students, they knew for sure this person is not originally Canadian. Maybe he has the Canadian nationality, but he's originally Arab because of his features and because of so many things. For him, he underestimated their intellect. So what they did in the class, they would always give taunts in Arabic, abuse him in Arabic. It was continuous until he was fed up with that, until one day he said, you, you think I don't understand what you say? I'm from Lebanon. And that made matters worse. So they knew he was lying to them, he wasn't uh, honest with them, they stopped respecting him and actually it was chaos during his period. You would find them running here and there, he lost respect. So be who you are. Yes, what else? Any other comments? Yes, brother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, the brother is asking about the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu One third is for your food, one third for your drinks, and one third for your uh, breath. Actually, it, it, it does not mean um, literally that you divide your intestines into three thirds. What it means, you know the measure, you know how, the measurement of how you eat. What could be little food for me, it could be more for someone else. So you yourself according to your experience you know what makes you full you know there is some time when someone would eat a lot and say you know i ate a lot today i can't even move so you avoid that feeling of being saturated with food in the sense that you keep belching all the time burping all the time you can't move and actually there is a scientific aspect of it because they say over this st ab above the stomach below the diaphragm there is a sac when you fill it with water this sac will push the diaphragm up and it will restrain your breath. You will not breathe properly. This is a scientific discovery after uh, one, more than 1,400 years after the Prophet ﷺ had said that don't fill your stomach. So the gist of the matter is you yourself, you make calculations. What's too much for you, what's less for you. And actually what scholars say that when we eat, we, uh, there are three situations. There is one situation when you eat so that you don't die. You just eat for necessity. Haja. And there is when you eat, you don't overfill yourself, but you eat to a normal level. And there is when you eat extra. So these two, when you eat, you feel that, okay, now I'm okay, I can't die. And when you eat, you feel that now I am, I have satisf I'm satisfied. So this middle one is the best because the Prophet ﷺ would always advocate for moderation. So the point is you yourself, you judge yourself because it depends on where you are, it depends on your size, it depends on how the food will test you. So you will say that this is much for me or this is less for me. But all in all, don't overfill yourself with food. This is bad for your health. And if you do a research on it, you'll find a lot of findings. And actually because I was expecting you, I made a printout, it's upstairs, I can give it to you from the scientific perspective. Any other questions or comments? Okay, actually, I, I will end with, um, with this. There is a very good quote about, okay. This was a person who was a, a church goer, who used to go to the church frequently, who isn't a Muslim. He said, by going to the church, he was getting his batteries recharged, recharging his faith. And he acknowledged that Allah is the source of all energy. Energy in the universe, atomic, electrical, and spiritual energy. Indeed, every form of energy derives from Allah, God the Creator. So he quoted the Bible 
in which it said, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. So he was quoting this whenever he was in low moods, and by continuously quoting this verse, he would come back to his good moods. And actually the Prophet wasallam he heard Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. It was, they were actually going to the battle of Haybar, and the companions were ecstatic, uh, loudly saying, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Then the Prophet ﷺ chastised them. He said, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not deaf. He hears you. You don't have to shout. Then Abu Musa al-Ash'ari said, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Which can be translated, there is neither power nor strength except with Allah. So every strength that we have, we get it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet tells Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, if you say this statement, you will have gotten, this is a word, a statement, among the treasures of paradise. In other words, the more you say this, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes happy with you. So there is neither power nor strength except with Allah. So if you are in a threatening situation, you are a student, you are going into an exam, you are in a hostile place, you are afraid, keep repeating this, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. By repeating it, it will give you motivation, it will give you strength. So so everything depends on Allah. All what we said comes secondary after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you believe in God Almighty, you submit, you submit to Him, you acknowledge His presence everywhere, you, uh, you, uh, you accept His goodness, you follow His guidance, then He will be with you. And actually, this is the power of words because they say, Positive affirmations, positive experiences have to be repeated more than 12 seconds for them to move from short-term memory to the long-term memory. So if ever anything is positive and you want to inculcate it in your mind, especially in your subconscious mind, you need to repeat it more than 12 seconds. So first we say all the time repeat this and there are a lot of supplications that you can say when you are in a difficult situation. If you are sincere, Allah will help you. The point is, be positive always. Any other comments or questions? Any other comments? Would anyone like to role play like we did with Tony and Abu Huraira? <laughs> okay, Jazakumullah Khair. See you inshallah on Thursday when we'll be discussing the life of Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu